So, Kobe Strip, it's great you have a lot of people here. And uh, start off, I work as a programmer at Map Unity. Uh, so, at Map Unity, we'll build products where we solve social issues. For example, Map Unity build. So, uh, a couple of reasons why uh, Coffee Strip actually piqued my interest is one, uh, I intend to develop a, a few mobile web applications, which means I'll be working on JavaScript frameworks using stuff like Backbone and Node, uh, for which, of course, I'll be writing a lot of JavaScript code. And after playing with Coffee Strip for a while, I really felt Coffee Strip is a better way to use JavaScript. We'll get to how that actually is in a bit. And uh, the second thing is, uh, I'm a Rails programmer. So how many are Rails programmers here? OK, <laughs> that's not bad. So th for those of you who aren't Ra Ruby on Rails programmers, yeah, CoffeeScript. So those of you who aren't Rails programmers, uh, the latest version of Rails, which is 3.1, made CoffeeScript as a default, right? So that was a pretty big decision by the core team. And uh, it got a lot of flame war as, as well. So, uh, so that's that's why I, I really may have to use coffee stream in the future, and this kind of forced me to look into it. Right. Um, just before we dive into, can you hear me? Yeah. Just before we dive into coffee stream, a very known fact, an open secret: JavaScript is truly ubiquitous. I mean, especially since Node came out, JavaScript moved out of the browser. You can run it on your client, on your server, and this happened because there's a trend going on right now that you have to have applications that are more responsive, the interfaces are richer, and the, the only way you could do it is using JavaScript because JavaScript is the only programming language that is supported natively by browsers, right? You shouldn't really use stuff like Flash. Um, right. Uh, so, uh, no. Because, I mean, just before uh, I dive in, so, yeah, yeah so before Node.js, uh, writing a chat client in JavaScript was, I mean, real, let alone JavaScript, writing a chat client was trivial, as, as it is in Node.js right now. I mean, you can write a chat client in eight to ten lines of code, but it's not that hard. Uh, I remember this thing I read on Twitter a few days ago. So in computing, there are only two things that are really hard, right? One is concurrency, handling concurrency. The other is uh, naming methods and stuff. And the other is off by one errors, right? Nobody gets the geek joke. Right, so CoffeeScript. Uh, Jeremy Ashkenas is the guy who developed CoffeeScript. He, he also developed Backbone.js and uh, Jamit, which is a packaging asset library. Uh, so he puts it really well. It's a, coffee, a thought experiment. As in, before you actually dive into writing a lot of JavaScript code, just ask yourself a few questions. Ask yourself what if questions. You know, what if you didn't face the problems you usually face with JavaScript? Things like what if you didn't face global variable problems? What if you don't face the value of this sometimes just dynamically changes because this is a dynamically scoped object, right? The value of this doesn't just go underneath your feet sometimes. What if you don't have to, you know, wrangle the prototype chain to achieve object-oriented JavaScript? So that brought him to CoffeeScript, right? So what is CoffeeScript, really? CoffeeScript is a language, a little language, as he puts it, that compiles one-to-one -to, -one to JavaScript, right? So you write some CoffeeScript code, compiles to JavaScript, and you run the JavaScript in your browser. Uh, of course, the latest news with this is uh, Mozilla is working on integrating CoffeeScript into the browser. So you can natively use CoffeeScript. You could right now natively use CoffeeScript. You can, you can use text slash CoffeeScript tags, but you'll have to use the CoffeeScript uh, compiler in, in, in the browser, which is not that great. Right. Uh, how many of you use SAS? You can just nod your heads. SAS, oh, great. Uh, so for those of you who don't know what SAS is, SAS is syntactically awesome style sheets, right? It's a layer of abstraction over CSS, and it gives you some awesome stuff like uh, you can declare variables. For example, you can use uh, color codes and put them in variables, and usually you have a color palette in your website, and it becomes really easy to manage all that if you have variables, right? It also gives you 
uh, mix-ins, so you can abstract away common code you usually write in style sheets and use, you know, abstract, abstract it away and use it multiple times instead of repeating code. So it keeps your code dry. Uh, it, you can you can also do stuff like uh, you can if you have a div, you want to darken it. You can, it, it gives you some math functions, so you can darken it by 20% or lighten it by 20%. So uh, it's a layer of abstraction that has taken that's been taken by the community really well. Of course, uh, hardcore CSS programmers, uh, I have not met any hardcore CSS guys who really have taken to CSS, CSS. Anyone here? No? Oh, here. That's great. So because uh, they feel vanilla CSS does the job and you don't really need that stuff. So CoffeeScript, in a conceptual level, is, is similar in that it's an abstraction layer over JavaScript, right? Right, so uh, let's show you some code. <coughs> uh, I have some JavaScript code that I'd like to show you. Oops. So you guys can see it. Yeah, it's a it's a very simple adder function, it just takes in two variables and you know, adds them up and gives them back to you. So how would you convert this to CoffeeScript? So let's let's do that now. So in CoffeeScript, there are, you don't need to use semicolons, right? It saves you that pain, so let's remove these semicolons. Uh, there are no curly braces, again, saves the finger pain. Uh, you don't. Uh, there is no var keyword in CoffeeScript, so, I, uh, so every variable you use, the var is automatically attached by the compiler. So you don't have to worry about var. Now, of course, uh, in JavaScript, uh, you declare variables with var and sometimes assign variables without using var, and that that can leak variables to global uh, to the global namespace. So, we, so we'll see how CoffeeScript solves that problem. So you don't you don't need the var. Um, in CoffeeScript, the last statement of a set of instructions, for example, in a scope like, like there's a function, right? So the last statement is implicitly returned. So you don't have to explicitly say return A plus B. So you can just say A plus B. That's it. That statement is returned. Right. The function keyword. Uh, this is pretty funny. The, the function keyword is actually replaced by... That's it. That's the function keyword. Brend Nike, who is the inventor of JavaScript, got so psyched about this, he proposed this to ES Harmony, which is the next version of uh, ECMAScript, the official version of official name for JavaScript. And surprisingly, it was shot down. <laughs> I don't know why. So, uh, so this is this is it really. So how you would read this is input a b go into the function and you get the output, right? So that's it. Uh, Sorry? Exactly. I'll come to that. So in CoffeeScript, one more very important feature is white space indentation. Right? Just like Python, you have to indent your, state, uh, your expression. One little improvement you could do here is avoid the next line itself and just put it here. So it's really a one-liner right now. And that's about it. Uh, yeah, one more thing is when you're invoking a function, the parents are optional, right? So you can you can remove that, and that's it. So let's just compile this in here. So you get five. I don't think you can see that now. <laughs> but yeah, you get you get five really. That that's it really. It's, it does the same thing, but <laughs> we can't see it. Okay, you get the same thing, but with much less line noise and much concise code. So, uh, one more thing that's interesting here is, uh, uh, I've, I've heard a lot of arguments saying, okay, great, another alternate JS, it go, it's going to spit out some JS, like a lot of other JavaScript uh, interpreters, right? So, let's see what this actually compiles to. Um, So 
So there. So that's the JavaScript that compiled to. And this is JavaScript you would actually be proud of writing. I mean, I'm, of course, there's a trivial example. But really, you're not making it. Can you see this? I just try expanding this. This is JavaScript you would want to write. Uh, right. <coughs> this function you see here is a wrapper Co CoffeeScript provides as a safety to uh, prevent global namespace leaks, right? Of course, wa var add, you declare the variable for you actually use it, and that's it. It, it uses the function literal uh, type of functions, which is the better practice. And of course, at the f it, it says call this, right? So this is good JavaScript. It doesn't spit it out. It, it sings, really, JavaScript. Yeah, it sings. <laughs> so, uh, uh, you, you guys read Hacker News, Reddit, I'm sure, yeah. So, right, a lot of arguments say, great, I have to switch to this because of the syntax, right? For example, Haml, you guys have heard of Haml? Yeah, so Haml is, um, is a markup language that, again, abstraction of a HTML, but the difference between Haml and SAS CoffeeScript is Haml does not provide you any functional, added functional value. Really, it is just syntax, nothing else. Whereas SAS and CoffeeScript give you much more added value. Uh, so it's not just syntax, really. It's really the icing, and people won't jump from JavaScript to CoffeeScript because of syntax. That will be just an added bonus. So uh, the CoffeeScript homepage, you guys have read it. If you guys have read it, makes a few nice claims. It says it hides the bad parts of JavaScript. We'll see how it does that and focuses on the good parts. Uh, it extracts out, can you see it? If it extracts out common patterns from JavaScript so that you don't have to repeat code wherever you use that pattern. It gives you an idiom. I'll show you idioms and how exactly it can reduce your code. A better object oriented programming model. As I said, if you want to write object oriented programming mo uh, programs in JavaScript, you'll have to hack around with the prototype chain. You'll have to say, you know, shape dot prototype this and it doesn't feel right, does it? Right. Uh, so I, this is a great book in case you haven't read it. The Good Paths by Douglas Crockford. Uh, I've taken a few, uh, I've taken some inspiration from the bad part. So there, there are two chapters in this book at the end. There's one on awful parts and one on bad parts, right? So like two chapters dedicated to bad parts and took a few of them to show you how coffee script tries to alleviate the pain. So yeah, global variables. This, according to him, and we all know it, is pure evil, right? Uh, you forget the war keyword. Can you notice a subtle difference? It's it's subtle. In, instead of the comma, there is a semicolon, and boom, it's in your global namespace, and your page crashes, right? So uh, it's it's pure evil. Let's not go there. Why they're evil? It's everyone knows and. You, sh you really shouldn't use global variables. So what's the solution? The solution is you don't use global variables at all. That's the ideal solution. But of course, there are cases when you would want to use a global variable. In such a case in JavaScript, the best practice is to attach the JavaScript variable as a property to the window object, right? So like, yeah. So for example, in, in the browser, the global object is the window object, right? So if you attach that as the property to the window object, one, it is explicit that it is a global variable you're using. Two, there are no name clashes. So let's see what CoffeeScript does. And CoffeeScript, there are no global variables, really. Uh, so as I said, there is no var in CoffeeScript. So every uh, variable that you declare is uh, attached automatically with var. And the function scope which I showed you, uh, which enclosed the code I showed you, it le you know prevents leaks to the global namespace. So again, if you would if you would want to use the global variable, you would have to attach it to the window object. Or in Node.js, I think it would be the exports object. Equality. This is this is confused new programmers a lot. It confused me, and I'm sure it confused a lot of you as well. I mean, really, uh, the double equals operand is not what you think it is sometimes, right? In 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 uh, if you for example, if you're coming with C, you wouldn't expect this kind of a result and you get it from JavaScript. So what does CoffeeScript do? Uh, a pro tip here would be to always use the triple equals, right? So CoffeeScript 
compiles the double e double equals when you use it in coffee to triple equals there is no double equals in coffee scrub for example it also gives you some you know syntactic sure just to make you feel nice the keyword is is, is synonymous to double equals the keyword isn't is synonymous to not equals that is inequality so if you so what if you really want to use double equals you would have to uh, escape that with back ticks and that would be raw javascript and coffee script code false values this is one more thing douglas highlights in his book uh, there are a few values in javascript zero nan not not a number sorry this is actually false but it doesn't to make too much sense because zero is a perfectly valid number you wouldn't want it to be false right for example that wouldn't work because name is what's the value of name undefined correct right so what does coffee script do everything is truthy in coffee script except null or undefined so except null or undefined except everything is truthy and you can use the question mark symbol like in ruby to check if it's true or false so basically it will return false if your value is undefined or null so this gives you great amount of relief and is is uh, especially useful when you're using the conditionals so let's say x equals x or y right in such cases you don't have surprises you know exactly what your code is doing coming to a few features uh, again ask and ask yeah sure you know you can sit <laughs> sorry yes no <laughs> I, uh, That's a pretty good question. False, I think is is false. Do you know the answer? I think it's false. You want to check it out? I'll I'll get to you later. So, <laughs> so language features, right? So Jeremy Ashkenaz, uh, as I said, he extracts popular design patterns and gives you an idiom so you don't have to reuse code in your in your code base. Let's go through a few. wins right as i said the last value statement is explicitly returned right so you don't have to mention the return statement but for high performance javascript sometimes in case it returns a very heavy object you don't want a lot of memory to be allocated you can just say return and it returns undefined so you don't have that problem um but of course there are very few cases you'll find yourself doing that really uh, significant white space as you saw everything is an expression uh this especially comes in handy when you have uh, you can suffix if statements if 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 statements to your say let's say x equals 1 and say uh, alert x if x is 1 you can't do that in javascript but you can do it in coffee script because the suffix works because everything is an expression it's evaluated in run time uh like in ruby you can use the hash brackets to string interpolation this is especially useful and it's not you can you can also put code here for example i can assign name to a variable i can say name dot to upper case inside the hash brackets loops and comprehensions so uh, what the while loop does is after it loops through it returns an array and splats so splats is useful uh, you, you guys have worked with the arguments object javascript gives you with every function so you usually use it to test the length of the number of arguments you get but coffee script gives you a nice argument says others right so uh, and it's not others i have used others but you can use others uh, the syntax is actually wrong you have to use others dot 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 and that's a splat right i'm sorry about that but that's a splat so what happens here is the first argument which is js foo gets into current conf and the other arguments php cloud doc type html goes into as an array to the others array uh, the uh, please note the syntax error there it's actually others dot 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 it's, it's three dots the existential operator as i said to test true the and false the values very useful uh i think ruby guys will be uh, accustomed to this writing in yaml so if you want to write an object literal you use it you use curly braces and you separate with commas which is okay in javascript it's not that bad but coffee script takes that a bit further and it you remove the commas if you can use it in the yaml format 
as i said the suffixed if condition works because everything is an expression so you have again much less line noise uh this is a feature actually which is proposed in es harmony uh so here as you can see some diff equals you get the arguments this is especially useful when you return an array of arguments from a function so it's useful when you're capturing multiple arguments from the function right right so this is an example from crockford so anyone know what's going on here so what does the co first console log scope return or what what does it print rather sorry so all of you would say outer you seem to you are my friend i am going to talk to you later right yes what is going to, what is it going to print sorry undefined that's correct so your console dot log is going to print undefined and would you know why can you tell me why exactly right so wasco is declared so what what exactly you're doing the technique here or a, a bad technique really is shadowing you're actually shadowing your value uh, for example this inner function is actually a closure and it should have access to the scope variable but what what we've actually done is we've shadowed it and we've removed the access to the scope variable and this is really bad you, you shouldn't use shadowing and the ideal practice is to use different names in your inner function so that you have access to your uh variables that are in in the functions closure right sorry yeah so the first you, you understood why the console dot log didn't work right okay so so here you declared was so because outer that's good but it's it, it's not in this scope explicitly right this is the function and you again declare was so because inner so what happens in javascript is a thing called hoisting right so the was scope actually gets hoisted here gets initialized undefined and then gets assigned so again it's yeah it's a bad idea to use shadowing so don't do it so coffee script uh kind of alle alleviates this so this is what this is the behavior you would expect so when i asked you the question everybody said outer so that is the first instinct that comes to a programmer right and the, and in, when you write a similar code in coffee script you get exactly what you guys expected So when you say console dot log scope, it actually refers to the variable in the inner function's closure, which it, which it should. But whereas in our previous function, it was it was shadowing that variable. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Ah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Right. So uh, as I said, told you hoisting. JavaScript is, does not have bl uh, block scope, right? Unlike C, it has function scope. So sometimes, if you declare a, or assign a variable at the end of the function, that variable is actually available at the top of the function because the variable is actually you know available throughout the functions because it has function scope. So the best practice to avoid confusion is to you know use or declare variables right at the top of the function, which is what CoffeeScript does. Actually, if I compile the code and show it to you, the variable is actually it, uh, it doesn't redeclare the scope variable because scope the variable scope is already in inner scope which is why it doesn't declare it again okay um i have an example for you but this there's no internet i believe so so let's say so i need you guys with a little uh, do a little imagination so let's say you have a plain page and you just put a dom element right you just you just put a box black box and you bind that with a jquery callback so, so when i say dot click it should say alert my name i've written this in coffee script so usually those things don't work in javascript if you write it the first time if you usually get it wrong why because the value of this is dynamically scoped and the time you run that function the value of this would have changed and it would be assigned to let's say the global object in such case it can, it can cause strange bugs but coffee script gives you a nicer way to declare that type of function so in case you want to bind the value of this to the uh, to the value of this when you are actually defining the function you use the fat arrow instead of the single arrow instead of the you know normal arrow so what the fat arrow does is the time you are writing the function what is the value of this that is actually bind uh, that is that is bound 
so this dot name is actually uh, actually works but in javascript what you would have to do is declare a variable called let's say self and then initialize that to this and then use self and say self says hello right coffee strip has class right it really does because let's say in, you want to write object oriented programming as i said in javascript you have to wrangle with your prototype chain uh, it's not always nice anyone enjoys that enjoys writing javascript object oriented style i mean it, it it's especially important right now because you have a lot of frameworks like backbone coming up and which include which encourage you to write object oriented programming and it's not it's not great but coffee strip solves that problem so let's look at it okay first how does this look it, it looks nice right you have the class keyword you have something called the extends keyword and the super i'll get to that in a bit so the class keyword is a nicer syntax provided by javascript which allows you to add methods and variables to the animals prototype in this case right it gives you a constructor so at Uh, the initial variables are assigned when you are when you create the new object so for example cheetah equals new cheetah and dot run okay uh, i actually can run this want me to run this okay monkey patching so anyone does, anyone did monkey patching in javascript javascript is dynamic so like ruby you can monkey patch it you can uh, of course one thing you would have to keep in mind is the open close principle ideally it should be open for extension and closed for modification but that rule can be relaxed if the consumers of the code is you or your team right let's say if you if you giving out the code like like an api or giving out people the chance to add to the code it's probably not a good idea so this uh, so coffee strip gives you the colon colon what this actually does is it says go to strings prototype and add the function capitalize so you can use foo bar capitalize so you just added a method to strings prototype and that that was how easy it was so um i have few picks so js to coffee.org anyone use this no one so this is a pretty interesting tool so if you have if you want to try out coffee script or you want to learn how it works this there is a tool called js to coffee so you write some javascript you go to this website you put the javascript in and it compiles to coffee strip this is hilarious because you write javascript then you put it to coffee strip and again again you compile it to javascript and use it in your code i mean i know it sounds hilarious but it's actually useful when you're in, in your initial stages of learning right you get to learn how javascript works and put puts it in coffee strip but i must say don't use this for a lot of code just don't really maybe for trivial functions and for little functions it's fine but the best way to write coffee strip is to write coffee strip by hand and not use js to coffee it's it's a tool you can use in your initial stages of learning tinkerbin i'm heard of it okay uh, js fiddle sure so tinkerbin is like the next step from js fiddle right so it though this gives you uh, to run haml sass and coffee strip code it's actually available at tinkerbin.com So you, so you can uh, use coffee script right there and compile and it, it all just works it's it's great it's a nice tool so you don't have to save files and then run the code you can just do it on tigerben.com coffee table so as i said coffee script is not natively supported in your browser right only javascript is you have to compile javascript and put that javascript into your file so coffee table uh, actually lets you debug your coffee script it compiles the coffee script in it gives you like an extension So it, it compiles the JavaScript and shows you what JavaScript your coffee strip generated. The the little book on coffee strip is a free ebook. It's written by this guy called Alex Meko. Uh, so it's it's a nice little. It's really little actually, and it's free. That's the best part. There's there's another book called Accelerated Development with Coffee Script. That's a paid book. That's a prog prog book, which is pretty good. But I I think this should do for initial learning. Right. So as I mentioned. hacker news and reddit i've been reading a lot about coffee script over the past two weeks and trying to get a sense of what people who are actually using coffee script in production feel about it right so i've scored through threads and the general consensus seems to be that people are enjoying the experience they like writing coffee script 
one because it's not an all js that spits out js right it's it's an it's an all js that writes javascript that you can actually it's it's human readable javascript you can easily read that javascript and you can debug it the the biggest problem with coffee script right now is debugging coffee script but coffee script try, tries to avoid that problem by giving you some really nice human readable javascript uh it just beat haskell and action script i believe as of today so it's getting really popular on github uh any mac users here okay there's this uh, uh application called pow p o w so it's a, it's it's a really easy way to deploy your apps for example you use passenger for ruby on rails it's 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 a really nice thing to use in development that's been written in coffee script uh anyone heard of trello trello.com okay great so trello is um so the the guys who made stack overflow jeff atwood and uh, what's the other guy's name right so those guys made trello trello is a project management system it's currently free at epic it's it's in beta and it's 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 got a nice you it's a nice javascript ui and it it's got like a gamification kind of a thing going on and and i believe their stack uses coffee script node js mongodb and backbone so they're really happy with their experience um this is i think a tribute i read on stack overflow someone said they're really happy with using proper classes especially a nicer syntax stuff and to close the testimony and the love for coffee script douglas crockford in his uh, I, i think he gave a conference at texas a very very was asked about coffee script and you know how he felt about it and he really warmed to the idea right he felt it it you know takes out all the crap from javascript it gives you a nicer syntax and you don't you don't worry about the bad parts of javascript that you usually find yourself worrying in so it's it's great and it's uh, i believe a lot of coffee script feature are features are influencing the current uh, tc39 ecmascript committee that is uh, working on bringing out the new version of javascript so my guess is even if you don't use coffee script invariably you will use features of coffee script maybe later on as as pure javascript so thank you that's it uh, this was actually meant to be a short presentation but i i kind of stretched it to 30 minutes do you have any questions i'd love to answer them i'll get back to your question i'm sorry <laughs>